Hey guys, welcome to ShiftCast. You're watching a segment from the full video. If you want to catch the full video, check it out in the live tab of our YouTube channel or on Spotify. Let's get right into it. Speaking of saving, we've got to save in a, we're in shambles. Uh-oh. <laughs> what, what a segue. A, what a segue. <laughs> let's go. Uh, well, let's get to talking about North American RLCS. Mm. Will a team outside of G2 and Gen G win a regional in this upcoming split? North America was, oh, I guess the window's not totally closed, but fairly quiet throughout the trade window here. Yeah, window really, is got, closed. Oh, it is closed. Okay, so we've got the... Uh, We've got the news, which is not official yet, of Stizzy to dig, but I think we all, you know, it's fair enough to mm -hmm. assume that that is the case. Uh, but other than that, it seems like it's fairly stagnant. It looks like SR stay the same. looks like SSG stay the same. Um, obviously, OG and LG did as well. NRG, I think, is still a question mark. It does seem like they are going to have a new third, but it hasn't been announced yet. And, mm -hmm. I mean, unless it's some sleeper talent that nobody's ever heard of, I don't really know that it's going to make a huge difference anyways. Um, and M80 stayed the same. So... Mm -hmm. I mean, we got a good look at most of the landscape outside of Dig in split one. Do you guys really have any faith in anyone? Not, I'm not saying, we, of course, we could see a, a second or, uh, excuse me, a third or fourth seed grab the spot from LGOG, but do you think anybody's going to win regionals besides G2 and Gen G? Um, well, first off, I want to say, I want to shout out Shopify Rebellion because I saw a Stizzy tweet that he was on his way to Toronto, uh, which means, once again, Shopify Rebellion continues their streak as the most profitable organization in the RLCS simply by <laughs> renting their facility out to european imports i don't know how they do it but they're just farming money they cornered the market all the sellers. yeah exactly <laughs> you know that's canada baby i felt bad saying toronto it's toronto that's how we say it down here but yeah uh there's it's no chance that any team yeah there's no chance that any NA team but g2 and gen g won a regional um unless one of them the thing is is like it's not like a one team region where like if that one team has a bad day they like another team could sneak sleep it sneak in the chances that both of them are going to play so poorly that neither of them win is so low plus yeah. genji did not look very good in uh their first two regionals and still made it all the way <clears> until <throat> they played g2 yeah. right yeah. uh none of the teams have improved outside of maybe dignitas skill wise and we don't know what this dignitas is going to look like uh in you know a team 3v3 environment um and i think genji has gotten so much better since the beginning of the season they looked great uh at land like despite you know Jack continues to harp on his thumb thumb grip, and you know what? Sure, like if that's if that's something that matters a lot to him, sure. Um, and I'm sure it, it did affect him, but they looked great. G2 obviously made the final, beat two of the top European teams. I think they're better now than they were in the online portion of the sport. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I they were it. supposed to be. Honestly, let's be honest, they were built like a super team, and they didn't show up at, right out of the gates as a super team. And if they can show now that they are worthy of that kind of name then yeah i mean they shouldn't be losing uh any regionals except maybe 2g2 mm -hmm. yeah. i mean i definitely feel the same i think it's going to be uh, it would be a, a massive victory for whoever it was that took down either one of these teams in the finals i think yeah. the re in my opinion i think the, there's only one other team that has the talent to do so and it's m80 who has mm -hmm. shown that they can beat totally gen when like you said, Genji was definitely not at their full uh, full power just yet. But e even them, you know, they've se we've seen it in Swiss, but we haven't seen it in Bracket. And so, yeah. you know, I, I think it's fair to say that those two are probably going to continue to dominate. I, I will say, uh, if it's going to happen, it'll probably be in the final open qualifier. And I say that because there is a chance that G2 and Genji split the first two regionals. They're locked in one and two seeds for Worlds, potentially, or they're like so close that basically only what happens at land determines what the top two seeds are. And they both kind of just get the natural human sort of not try as hard in the final one. Yeah. Um, but I, I also don't know if Gen G specifically would do that. Cause I think if they both split the two regionals to start, I think that last one, Gen G is going to be hungry to even it. They, they're going to want this season to be seen as one, a one B. And a lot of that would go towards them splitting the regional. So even then I'm not sure that'll happen. Yeah, definitely. Well, on that note, do we think that Gen G will continue to build on this strong uh, performance at the major throughout um, this final split. Obviously, like you said, they got a, a little bit of a slow start, especially compared to what the community kind of um, expectations were, right? Mm -hmm. And G2 definitely had um, their number, the first two events. Do we think things are going to flip? Do we think G2 is going to maybe um, build some confidence from this second place finish? Or maybe even be kind of um, 
you know, reinvigorated to, 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 to work harder. You know, they fell short of their ultimate goal. Uh, what do we think between those two teams? Obviously, we all agree that those are going to be our top two teams, but who's going to have the, uh, the better split too? I mean, Michael seems to think that Gen.G might be getting better than G2. I don't know if... He did think that at the beginning as well, though. Yeah, that's... Yeah. It was but never going to be. I, don't, <laughs> I just don't think you can say that that easily because it's not just Gen G getting better. It, it's also G2 getting sure. into the season a little bit more. You know, they started off right, but it doesn't mean they can't continue to improve their own uh, their own plays and, and make sure that the region really is theirs. Yeah. Um, so I actually am going to contradict myself a little bit. I think that uh, as good as Gen G's gotten, I just think both of them have gotten a lot better. And mm -hmm. one thing that I've been thinking about a lot was the reaction from G2 after losing the major, specifically beast mode. He tweeted almost right after, this is the worst feeling in the world. Um, and so I think while some other teams in the past have fallen off after doing really, really well at land and then losing in the final, I think specifically this G2 team with Daniel in beast mode, they're so hungry to get that win because they believe, I think, both of them believe that they deserve to be talked about in the same breath as the Vatiras, the Atomics, the First Killers, right? Yeah. I know First Kill hasn't won a land, but he's often mentioned in those uh, conversations. And I think they're going to think about how they were slow in the Swiss, how they were slow in the final regional, how they could have prepped and prepared better when they kind of let their foot off the gas. And that's going to actually kind of propel them to work yeah. even harder and, and continue to work on their play style. I like it. So both of you guys think G2 is probably going to I think there's something edge out a little bit of a better split here the second yeah. go around. They just have everything going for them. Of sure. course, Gen.G can catch up even more than they already have, but there's nothing standing in the way of more success for G2. Sure. Yeah, and I will say, I think Gen.G's play style has morphed almost to be the counter to G2 because they've had so much issues with them probably throughout the entire split, but they play very fast. They play very aggressive and they have someone up demoing and trying to get like these pl passing plays going. And that's an interesting sort of development, right? That you have a team whose play style is kind of evolving specifically to beat that uh, one team. But I also think that what G2 showed us specifically against Vitality was that they can take every single punch and keep their composure and find a way to win a lot of the times where Gen G is really, really trying to force those errors out of you. So it'll be an interesting dynamic, but I do think G2 is only getting better at the style that almost nobody else plays with them. And, I, and I'm excited to see it. I am too. Well, let's jump to our next uh, little segment here. Making the case for every land contender outside of those top two teams. As we said a couple times here, we, we all think that those two teams are going to make it. I think every other NA team would probably echo that sentiment. Um, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to assign each of us two teams, and you've got to sell those two teams to the audience. Ooh, Hopium Central. That's yes, right. So sir. my teams are going to be LG and M80. Michael is going to get OG and Dig. Jens is going to get Space Station and TSM. All right. Does anyone feel confident and would like to go first? I, Hoodie, I think you should go first. Let's do it to it. All right. First up, I'm going to say M80. I just talked about it a few minutes ago. Talent, talent, talent. They have so much talent on that roster. You look back at last season, you've got Optic Gaming, who had an abysmal, atrocious, terrible winter split. <laughs> they went out 15, 16, I think twice. And listen, I'm sorry, but they would say the same. They know that that was a terrible underperformance. And then they bounced back um, in, the, in the spring split, and that was a massive uh, effort by AJ specifically. He was incredible all season, but in that spring split, I think he just figured out a way to make it work on that in that team and on that system, which is part of what I believe will be, uh, or, or part of what has given me a little bit of faith in this squad moving forward. They are three players from three totally different squads that have never played together. And this is not an excuse, but it is just reality where as you play more together, you get more comfortable with one another. You know, we even talked about this off camera. As we do this show more, we all get more comfortable with one another. It's just human nature. And so these guys are going to be more comfortable with talking about what they're doing well, what they're doing poorly. They're going to get more comfortable with Nick. Um, you know, Nash is going to be more comfortable being here, same with Jorias. And I think that that bodes well for this team as they, you know, just um, 
team together longer. So with that said, I think that is part of what we are missing from that squad. It's that clutch factor, that trust, uh, that mentality. And I think those are all things that are going to improve after they stick with one another uh, for a longer period of time. So I, am, I, I like the M80 pick for top four this split. Um, Luminosity, I think if there is one team in the region that has all of their ducks in a row, the team is in line with one another. One of the things I used to coach, right? And one of the things I always said, the coach's job, and I'm oversimplifying here, but the coach's job, y'all know how the, the geese fly? The like that's geese. what you got to do as a coach. You have got to get all your players pointed this way. If they're all pointed different directions, if this one's trying to get stats and this one's trying to get wins and this one's just trying to coast and get, get to check, it's not going to work. And that team is lined up. They all want the same thing. I went and watched some um, Luminosity videos recently. I'm a, I love Magic Bear. He's such a sweet kid. Mm -hmm. He was he put up uh, just Luminosity highlights, and they, dude, they have so much fun together. I am cr like very rarely am I actually audibly laughing. I will enjoy YouTube videos, but I don't really laugh often. I was laughing because Cheese is a clown, dude. He is so funny, so high energy, so much enthusiasm. I know that Greg and Kevpert do a great job from a coaching standpoint, and you know, I think NA is just, it's, it's, it's wide open for the taking. We've got those top two, and Luminosity has shown that they can compete with pretty much anyone in the region outside of G2 and Gen G. Frankly, they were the ones that gave G2 uh, the toughest run up until Gen G in that final, totally. final regional. So I think LG can still make a run for that. They may not have as high quality of talent as some other teams. They may not have the superstardom in a singular player, but they've got teamwork and they've got an awesome system there. And I think they can grab that uh, third or fourth seed once again. The assignment was if they could grab the first or second seed now. No, that's not. No, 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 yeah, no, don't just, you, just, no, hold on, slow down, slow down. Land. Who quals for Landon 3.0? Yeah. yeah. Right, right. That's right. a tough sell if we got to say yeah. they're jumping no, G2 no. and Gen G. We're, we're <laughs> listen, nobody hears Jordan Belfort. We can't do all that. But. <laughs> Um, I mean, enough. listen, listen, you, you got me on uh, M80 for sure. LG, I was already sold on. Cause I think they're, uh, that the confidence going, leaving land is probably sure. a lot. It's pretty big. So yeah. I, I can't, I can't say that you convinced me more than I was already convinced, but M80, I'm like, well, Hey, y'all be sure to jump in the comments too. And tell us who you think had the best pitch. Um, yeah. Michael Yens, who's, who's, who's ready to rock. Yeah. I mean, do you want to go? Yeah, sure. I think you actually gave me quite easy teams here. Uh, I've got an easy, easy time. Uh, although I, I still, in the back of my mind, I have, I have this feeling like they need to beat someone like Genji or, or G2, because if they're not going to be able to get a win against those teams, it's very hard to consistently get into that top four, That's right? True. You, you're just going to have those kind of matchups. You need to be able to beat that, but okay. Let's just say they get lucky with the bracket just a little bit. I get into that top four without having to beat the top, the top two of the region. Sure. Then we have Space Station. I mean, do we even have to say it? It's the team that everyone thought they should have been there. They should have already been there in the first split. The second split should be kind of wide open for them because, yeah, there hasn't been that many roster changes. There isn't that much exciting uh, rosters out there that... People really look to for these are the new ones. Everyone should look out for them. So Space Station is a team that should be able to get very close to at least, um, but can definitely make it into that top four. And then TSM is maybe a little bit of a harder sell, but look at how they went through the first split. They got top 14 in the first qualifier, top 11 in the second qualifier, and then a four, top four in the last one. All they did was improve. And if they can keep that up, maybe not top four every time, but if they can beat enough of their competition, because that's what it's all about, right? Beating your own competition for a team like TSM. And, and there's a lot out there in, in North America. We've talked about it in, in the last week's episode that you have that top two and then below that the level seems to be a little bit lower but there are a lot of teams on that level yeah on okay. that level with tsm uh with pirates on a boat with with m80 maybe with space station even everyone else basically all, all the teams we're mentioning right now yeah so if they can beat that competition and they seem to be on the road to do that 
then top four is there for them. Um, I was going to say, funny enough, Udi, when you were talking about the teams that could win uh, a qualifier outside of G2 and Gen G, M80 would have been my number one pick, but low-key, TSM would have been my second pick, <laughs> and I wouldn't even have them going to land, for, to be completely honest with you, even though I think they're good. But it's like, there's just something about that team where I'm like, if they just pulled a regional win out of their hat, I wouldn't be like totally surprised. It's yeah. more, I'd be more surprised with like SSG, but I feel like they're like a top four merchant team than like, mm. you know, just a, a magic friendship run from yeah. <laughs> to win a regional. Um, but yeah, I'll go next. Um, OG, two words, baby, Jacob Knappman. I thought he still looked really, really good at the land, even though OG didn't. Uh, they just seemed to not be on the same page the entire time. Um, and I think what this team has going for them is I think they know how to win. It's just that not all the time they perform to that level, but there's a goal there. I think some of the teams are still trying to figure out what is their win condition. I think OG knows their win condition. It's play smart, play aggressive, keep the other team on their back heels, control the boost, control the midfield, capitalize on mistakes, right? And they've seemed to, as we saw in the back half of the online split, actually know how to do that. It's just that sometimes it feels like what's going on in their head and what they're doing with their fingers isn't the same. I think that the major one was a little bit of an outlier, and I think that we're going to see more of the open qualifier two, three OG than the major open qualifier, open qualifier one OG. And on top of that, I think they're playing lesser competition than they did at the major, right? Like LG is net. You're probably not going to meet LG in the one, two round. Well, actually you probably will. Cause they always go to round five, but you know, <laughs> the chances of you running into a team that isn't as prepared, talented as some of the teams they had to play in Copenhagen is it's, it's guaranteed. You're not going to have to play yeah. four teams that could win the major in five rounds. Um, and so for that reason, I mean, the, they're, they're still the same experience, disciplined team. And I think that you know, they, can, they can find a way, the way they found a way in the first major to show that resilience and, and make, make the second land and, and win Worlds because that'll probably clinch the world spot. Um, in terms of Dig, Dig is like the opposite of OG, right? <laughs> where it's like all talent, all risk. You know, you're not playing it safe with players that have won before and, and trying to figure out how to maximize their roles. You're taking two players who have shown so many flashes of being upper echelon pros and trying to make them consistently upper echelon pros. Yeah. Each of the player, both Stizzy and Evo, have had moments that have made people think that they were the future of the region. Not the future, I guess, but one of the future players sure. of the region. You can go back to Algiri and Monaco Esports, for Stizzy, where there were moments where he was making top eight in Europe. And then obviously Evo has had some moments across the last two years where you're like, this guy should be top 10 and, and pretty soon. It just hasn't come. Um, I think this was a very calculated decision by them. It, it seems like if you're going to go get a player from another region, um, and you know we, they were trying out Astral, so it's not like they could have gone with a safer option, right? They could have gone with a more accomplished option. And instead, they went with the player who's younger because they have to see something there. Um, and then altogether, I just still believe in Arsenal as, uh, you know, the sort of the leader and the, the catalyst of a top tier offense, the way he's been for four and a half, he was, he was for four and a half years on space station. And I'll say one more thing about Arsenal is that this guy got a giant neck tattoo. Two days ago. <laughs> and you is. know what that means to me? That means he's not looking for a nine to five anytime soon because they don't like that. <laughs> and so what I'm telling you is that this guy is, he knows some, he knows that he's going to be making a lot of money and winning a lot and staying on these orgs for a long time. And to me, what that tells me is that there's something going on there. And I think similar to M80, they have the talent to make the major. It's just about if they can put it together. And I just, the, the, the move was so weird that I kind of believe they knew they had something before everyone else did. So yeah, I think that this is a major team. You sold me with wow. the tattoo. I'm a tattoo fan. That's a sick tattoo on his neck. I love it's, it. It's so cool. And you're right. He's got to know something. I mean, he, yeah. he's, he's up to something. He's feeling good. He's feeling confident. I know what I feel like when I get a new tattoo. And you just oh, feel. You're, just, you're looking for reasons to show people. You're oh, like, yeah. You're, you're just, just like, feeling you're like, ah, ah, on top of the. Ah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're feeling on top of the world, man. So, yeah. Oh, my God. The hope right, has reached, reached new levels. <laughs> new levels, man. Y'all let us know in the comments below uh, whose cell you are buying. We got Hootie with LG and M80. We got Michael with OG and Dig and Yens with SSG and TSM. That's going to conclude North America. Let's jump over to Europe. Will Real region. Casey, huh? Oh, I thought you said something. 
The real see. reason, he said. The real, real reason. reason. I knew I heard reason. something. <laughs> will KC continue to have a vice grip on Europe online? Or will Gentlemates confidence post Copenhagen carry over to split two? And let me throw, or anything else. I feel like those are not the only two options of what's going to happen. Yeah, I guess, you know, as the as the topic sheet, man, I guess I, I could have framed it differently. And it's that those are kind of the two teams that everyone's putting as number one in the world right now, right? Like everyone either has KC or Gentlemates. So I guess the question that would be better asked, and that's my fault for not writing it properly, as which team will, will it be the online momentum from Carmen Corp or the land momentum from Gentlemates that carries them or that is more apparent throughout the online split? I know what Jens thinks. Jens thinks Gentlemates sucks because he thinks... No, he no, 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 no. <laughs> he said Seiko's suck. trash. He said Juicy's Mickey. He said they're... Uh, he said right. Everson is still carry. All three events. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Amazing. Yeah, no, are... I, I made a hot take uh, that I already didn't completely stand behind. Um, <laughs> but if you're asking who's going to do better in Split 2, KC or Gentlemates... I would say KC has still more going for them. I they know. certainly have me. I mean, they certainly have me feeling more confident. You know, right. I, like if you were to ask me to like, hey, I'm taking a hundred dollars from your bank and I need you to tell me what you think is gonna happen. And like that you, you know, place your safest bet. I'm I'm not backing Genomates. I know that they just won the major and it was obviously an, an unbelievable run. They were mm. just tearing oh, yeah, up whoever got in their it. way, right? But They've also shown, even at home, where it's not always the absolute top tier talent. Um, they've shown inconsistency there. So no, especially at home, you could yeah. say. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's especially right. online. So well, they have to show that they can play online as well as they could play in Copenhagen. Can I say I don't think, I don't think KC will have a vice grip on the region. And I also don't think Genomates is going to win. Like, I don't think they'll win two regionals. They might, they might win one. I don't think they'll win two. I think Europe actually is it's going to be more competitive. I mean, those top yeah. four teams, right? I think they were very solidly the top four. I think there were a couple other squads. I think Oxygen had an outside chance on catching them on an off day. I think Magnifico was the same way. I think even Redemption, if they were absolutely balling out, or maybe Team 3, if they're absolutely balling out and they caught... Monkey Moon with a 103 fever. You know what I mean? Like something yeah. just crazy. Then they could catch a, a victory. But those four were so clear yeah. that they were just undoubtedly the top four. And I think yeah. those four are going to have a tougher time because now it's, I, I mean, I assume that it won't be as comfortable of a victory over Oxygen. I assume that it won't be as comfortable of a victory over Magnifico. It may not be a victory at all for all these teams. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. I think that to me at least... I think this is Gentlemates region for the taking. And I'll tell you why. Because when you win a major the way they did, where you beat so many great teams and you don't lose, what you figured out is exactly the way you have to play to be the best team in the world. Now, how replicable is it? I don't know. But you have a formula, and you know that formula works, right? I think Carmen Corp and Gentlemates both have a claim to, figure, to saying, we know exactly how we have to play to beat everybody, right? But I think... Gentlemates figured it out more recently, and I think that gains you a small advantage for one reason, tape. There's less replay reviews and less experience that you've played against for scrims against this version of Gentlemates that is the best team in the world. And we've seen it so many times that a team is the best team in the world and they slowly start to peter off. We saw it with Vitality this year because you've played against them so many times, you know exactly how they're trying to play. And from, so for me, I feel like it'll be very similar um, to G2 after they won the winter major uh, in 21-22. They came out swinging. They won two straight regionals and lost in the grand finals because at that tournament, they figured out the G2 that was the best team in the world. And until a split later, when people started to figure it out, you know, they went to uh, London and they got reverse swept twice. Um, I feel like Gentlemates has that small advantage and that small advantage is going to make such a big difference in a region where the margins are so tight. But yeah, <laughs> enough about that okay enough about talking about <laughs> enough about talking about good uh, like teams that are on the upwards let's talk about teams that look like they're on the downwards mm. vitality and bds not really on the downwards but they yeah. didn't have the the copenhagen that I, I believe or anyone believes they wanted to have bds obviously uh leaned backwards out of the bracket um 
in, in the top eight G2. And then Vitality looked a little too reliant on Zen in their attempt to make the grand final and also yeah. lost to G2. Um, so for you guys, uh, what, which team do you think is going to regain, I guess? Like, not really regain, but like, you know, BDS was seen yeah. as the second best team. Vitality sure. was the third best team. They didn't look that. Which team do you think is going to look stronger out of the gate in uh, the second That is, this is so tough. It is, it is so difficult. tough. It's for different reasons, but I feel almost the same about both of them. I think Vitality obviously is coming from a, a whole different world where they just have so much success and the expectations are so high. But I will say this. I think there are, and there have been in the past where that, that kind of situation happens. And then this is going to sound bad, but like you fail and, and their failure mm -hmm. is top eight, top four, right? Like that's not really, yeah. but you fail enough to where you start to, you know, they had an X on their back, right? They had that target. Everybody's coming after them. But that target's not really there right now. I mean, of course, mm -hmm. people still want to beat them, as they do with whoever they line up across from. But it's not like Vitality is up here and everyone else is down here anymore. It's just not like that anymore. But then BDS, on the other hand, is similar to what I was saying about M80. They're, they're three players from three different squads. You know, Drolly is his first season as uh, an RLCS competitor. And um, they kind of came out of the gate swinging. And um, I think... Blew expectations out of the water, frankly. I think a lot of people knew that that team could be good, but just didn't know what exactly version we would see. And they were consistent. They were solid. Uh, it seemed like really the only competition they had was Carmi Corp and then potentially uh, General Mates or Vitality, whoever they ran into. But I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I mean, I, I there's always... It's kind of like this... Um, it's like it's nagging anxiety that I have surrounding Vitality, like the boogeyman is just, it's right there. At any moment, yeah. the boogeyman might pop out and just it's start dominating everyone. <laughs> well, the boogeyman has a name. It's three letters <laughs> long. <laughs> yeah. That's the boogeyman. But, Let's but be the, thing that's, the thing that's funny about that, though, is like Zen, as incredible as he is, he needs those other two. When those other two are playing well, that's when they are that boogeyman, right? And I, and I do, like, you see it occasionally, like, the Furious series, Rodosin is dunking people in the top right corner, a defensive challenge straight into his net. And it's like, when, when mm -hmm. Rodosin is playing like that and Alpha's on like his A game or B game, he doesn't even have to be perfect, right? But when Rodosin's playing well like that, they're so freaking scary because of what Zen is. And then Vitality on there, or excuse me, BDS on the other hand, I, I mean, Monkey Moon is just consistent. He's great. We know he will be. I think exotic, similar. And I do, I do get the sense that Drolly, like, We'll just continue to build confidence. He's been incredible as soon as he got in here. There's no, there's been no like adjustment period for him. And I think that is just going to build more confidence. I mean, I think they're both, I mean, frankly, I think they're both very likely to regain in the sense that like play better, more, more to the level that they probably expect from themselves. I, I really don't know. I, I have no, I don't even have an answer for you. Yeah, I, I like your focus on the confidence. And I, I like what you said about Drali that, that's someone who can only win in confidence, yeah. right? Whereas Vitality seem to have struggled with their confidence and with the way they play the game and, and the way they get countered by other teams throughout the entirety of 2024. And uh, I was very down on them uh, in, in the, the build-up to the major. Uh, one of my bold predictions was that they wouldn't make the top eight well they made it but they were one game off of yeah. getting eliminated in round five by luminosity so it, it was actually that close and to see a team yes they don't have you know they, they don't have everyone gunning for them anymore they're not the top dog so they don't have that x on their back as you would say they're still going to have to figure out their own confidence and their own yeah. issues within their team. And I don't see that being such an issue that you can solve within a week or two. Of course, we've had a break right now uh, before the second split. They could have worked on things. They could have <clears> worked it all out. Maybe screams are going swimmingly and uh, we'll see a team vitality that can beat uh, KC every other regional. I don't know, but the way it's looking, coming out of the first split, I don't get that feeling. I think BDS, if you're comparing the two, has much more of a chance to really get into the conversation as at the top of Europe than Vitality right now. 
So none, neither of you guys are worried about BDS, the mental side of it, given the history of BDS. No, I, I think they I feel like that's, enough. I feel like that's slightly overblown. I, I'm not saying me, that it doesn't exist, but I think it's very much something like I'm frustrated in how I'm playing right now, which is like way natural. It's way like I think a lot of players do that. They may not visually like show it, express it as much, but I think. And of course, you know, I'm sitting here speculating as well, but I think that is like, I, I don't get the idea that, you know, a, a poor performance carries on two, three, four weeks and, and later. I mean, well, I, I feel like it just definitely doesn't because he can, you know, his teams, Monkey Moon's teams continue to find success. Yeah. No matter no, no, what. No, I, I didn't, sorry, I didn't mean about that one specific moment. I don't think that's a huge deal. I think he was just frustrated in general and he happens to be someone who expresses it in a way. Every player is frustrated just because one slams her desk or leans back. But if you look at BDS's like results so far, it's like when you look at it in the macro, it's a little less impressive than like it, in the moment it kind of seems. The first regional, they get reverse swept. And I understand that it's still technically close, but that's just not good. Like if you get reverse swept as a team, me personally, I'm not saying you're a bad team, but I start looking at you a certain way. Carmine, who? Like Carmine. Just, I just, it, but it, ha but it happens. Like it you did. have to, you have to. Get, if you want to be a real contender, it did. you have to be able to take care of that, right? Like That's the right. best teams in the world take care of that, right? General mates down three two to Carmen Corp. They figured it out. Regional two, they're up three two against Carmen Corp again, and they blow it. Now I'm going to give them a pass for that because every team but General mates has done that. It seems like that's played Carmen Corp, gotten three two and then blown it. But still, once again, they've shown that they make key mistakes and big moments that then lead them to blow leads. Third regional did not play well, right? They went top eight, I want to say. I think. That's and then in this major, I don't know. To me, this was by far the worst they looked across the entire. Uh, they, they got swept by Carmine, but in the semifinals, so BDS has not dropped below top four the entire. So they haven't space. dropped. Sorry, I thought they were top eight. Um, but yeah, no, that, that was actually Vitality who, who yeah. got a, a top eight in the, the second regional. Eight. Yeah. So to me, and then yeah, like I said, I don't think they played well in Copenhagen the whole time. I remember going into that BDS. G2 series thinking if G2 puts the ball in the net, they're going to win. Like that was the only difference. They went 3 1 because they're, and I think BDS is a very talented team. I think in any other region, I would pencil them in at the top, but it's really tight up there now. And I think that the little mistakes that they keep making that keeps getting them out of tournaments could be much more, there could be yeah. larger consequences for that. Right. So I'm going to say BDS, I'm a little worried about them. And I love Monkey Moon. You know, I think Monkey yeah. is the best to ever touch the game. But I'm a little worried that all those little mistakes keep adding up and they keep kicking them out of tournaments. And then when there's six teams that can make a major and you're you right. have to play one of them in that top four, I mean the top, eight, top eight match, eight. that that's that's just not good. That's not yeah. good. I mean, as long as those mistakes happen to Carmine Corp, as long as it's the best team in Europe online, at least. Top Cougars, yeah, I agree. <laughs> uh, yeah. Who else did Top Cougars beat in that run? Gentlemates. They're the best team in the world. They People went crazy. That that's what that, that, that's the thing about Europe too, is like you'll see like a a, a bad loss, but that mm -hmm. bad loss is to a team that just went crazy, you know? Mm -hmm. it, it's yeah, tough. Yeah. It's tough. I think you bring up some valid points too. But I also like there's a there's a part of me that's like, well, that reverse sweep is a new team that has a brand new player, and you know, that is uh, that's something that you will learn from and and you know, maybe hopefully be able to adjust. It's also a new coach. I mean, you yeah. know, Cassio. Yeah, but they have in. to learn from it is what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't know right. if they so, learn from it yet because they keep yeah, making these mistakes. I, I think you bring up some valid points, especially the, and, and I mentioned it earlier too, the fact that it's not really just four big hitters now. Mm -hmm. And of course we're speculating, but, but I think there are two more dogs in the fight now that are going to make things a little bit more difficult for those top four. And, and, and like the thing is like, not just in that round at top eight, now mm -hmm. their Swiss runs are going to be more difficult. You know, yeah. they may end up facing one another in Swiss yeah. more frequently now than they were in, in split one. So let's talk about them for a moment. Auction and Luna Galaxy. Um, and I don't know that Luna Galaxy has been announced just yet, but it's the old Magnifico roster. They obviously Stizzy went across the way to dig and they have replaced Stizzy with a chronic. So you got a chronic atomic and tox on Magnifico slash Luna Galaxy. And then Joyo, we've covered this as well, has has joined Auction alongside Oski and Archie. Um, are they on par with the French Four? Um, first of all, 
what do we got to do to get Hootie Who at the next land to do a, <laughs> a Chronic and Atomic versus Atomic and Chronic 2v2 show match, best of five, just to hear him cast? I, that's what I'm trying to figure out. But We need, um, to, we need to get a Astromic in there, too. Throw him yeah, in there. Get a stro- is, is there any other X that we could throw in there? What? Oh, Cosmic. How about Cosmic? There we, we go. Perfect. Little, do we do a 2v2 mix-up? How about that? <laughs> um, but yeah, no. I uh, I mean, I, I said it before. Um, I think I really like a Chronic, man. I just I think he's been held, not, not held back, but he accepted a role yeah. that yeah. maybe tanked his stock a little bit. Um, and I think now he's in a position where it's up to him, right? It, like if he wants to be seen the way I'm sure he thinks he is, he had now has the team to be the central figure in it. He's got a great secondary playmaker with him, um, and he's got a great support player with him. So uh, I think you know, as we alluded to in the last episode, Oxygen really feels like a heavyweight knockout artist who might not have their grapple game down. You know, sorry, yeah, I watched UFC yeah. last weekend, and uh, well, I think that there there's a chance that Luna Galaxy or Magnifico um, are a little more well-rounded and a little more willing to take a few punches, get on the ground, you know, get in the clinch. Um, and I, I just really like them. Uh, and, you know, my, like I said, I think I said this last week, you know, I, I'm either quite right about the things that I think my predictions are incredibly wrong. So I'm sorry, Luna Galaxy, if you're not first, oh, you're probably no. going to be last. Um, yeah, no, big, big, I'm a, I'm a fan of that that roster. I, I agree. I think your your take about the the fact that a chronic, not, it's not held back. But yeah, that's, he that's the can wrong shine thing. brighter in a yeah. different role than maybe what he was, you know, kind of shoved into um, with Team Liquid. And obviously, they had tons of success as well as a, ski- as a squad. Um, but yeah, I think you're right. It's it's possible that he shines brighter as an individual with um, with a role on a on a different squad here with these guys that are a little bit more passive. You know, maybe it's a little bit more well balanced rather than mm-hmm. the previous squad, which felt um, very aggressive. And he had to, you know, he had to accept that that responsibility of being the safety net, being the anchor. Um, so now you can kind of take the, it's like, um, it's like when Goku takes off like the weighted, the weighted boots and everything. Like he's kind of let out the, you know, he's let out, uh, let out the gate now. So it, it will be fun to watch a chronic. Um, I, you know, obviously there's some bias here and I'm going to cast. And so I'm super excited, but I'm really excited to see Joyo. I have always loved watching Joyo play specifically because of that freestyle background. I know I've said this before, but it's just so creative. Um, a lot of the professional play, and it's just like a, it's just a mindset thing as you learn and as you improve. But Joyo didn't have like efficiency first as a mindset, mm-hmm. maybe when he was freestyling, right? It was maybe more about creativity or maybe more about flash and flare. And I think you can see that bleed into his now efficiency performance based play. Like he's got some tricks up his sleeve that you don't see anyone doing. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying it's more effective or less effective or whatever, but it's a fun to watch. I think he is such a fun player to watch. Um, and then alongside him, you've got Aussie, who I think, I think, frankly, I think a lot of the community has, like, he's just kind of gone to the back burner. They kind of, sl- he slips their mind now because he wasn't in that top four race. But I think if you look around at, like, some of these tier lists are floating around on Twitter, you look around at how the other pros rate, um, and even, like, the like more well-informed or, and, and tuned in, um, community figures, they are still talking about those two specifically as potential top 10 players in the region. And so, you know, I think a lot of, and I hate to pin so much pressure on one player, but I think a lot of oxygen success depends on Archie and if he can bring a good, solid, consistent game to play alongside those two. Now, obviously, those two have to play well um, in, in their own right, but I think if all three of those players can play to the level that we know they can, which has all, like you mentioned, has been always been the problem with this auction squad. Uh, the different iterations, they just don't play up to the level that we know they're capable of. If they do, I do think they're on par with uh, the French Four. I think they are. I think they can trade blows with all those teams. I don't think that there's anybody in the region that they just could not beat. Um, but again, that hinges on, are they playing to the ability that that I know that they can? Yeah, and also, you've talked about Joyo, you've talked about Oski, but we need to be talking about Joyo and Oski, because that's a duo that's just... <laughs> It's fate at yeah, this point. Coming home. Yeah, it, it's it's it had to happen, and now it's happening. And I just want to see how that duo is is going to be performing. And mm-hmm. yeah, that's going to be lovely to watch. Yeah, we're, we're lucky. We're they lucky do. they changed formats because there was there a hundred percent could have been like five EU top eight every single. Land <laughs> <from> <laughs> but well, let me let me let me throw this to you guys. Um, if either of these teams does replace one of the top four. And they go to land. 
Do you think that they are on level footing as far as like the ability to win the major? Or do you think no. maybe they need a little bit more experience? Maybe they don't have what it takes at the international level? I think uh, Luna Galaxy are like a top eight team world, but I okay. can't see them running into like a Falcons, a G2, sure. uh, any of the like a Carmine or uh, you know, and, and, and winning uh, on land. Uh, just because, to be completely honest with you, their their team, while v, very good uh, historically online, has not been very good on land. A, 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 right. Atomic, you know, no disrespect to the region, lost to APAC, right? Like, and yep. also came, you know, last place in his group and his only other RLCS land. And, and those and are two a, good teams uh, that he was playing with, too. It's not like it yeah, was a... Exactly. And a, cro- a chronic, a you know, that Liquid team always left a little bit to be desired, I think. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Um, Whereas I think Oxygen, they're like I said, they're not they're a knockout artist. So like they could do pull up gentlemates and pull up and right. just be so fast and so aggressive and so mechanical that no one can touch them for a weekend. I but I think that both the, I think that Oxygen also if, if a European team is not going to make bracket, it might be them because they could show up and do the complete opposite. Right. So yeah, yeah. The, the, um, the thing is with teams like Oxygen and Luna Galaxy is they can have the strength, the the power to beat the top four in a regional, but they will have to do it in at least two to actually make uh, have a good chance at getting into that top four. And, yeah. and only the teams who are able to do that and are able to perform in all three regionals, preferably, are the teams that are cut out yeah, to right. perform under the pressure at the LAN. So if, if they can make it, I mean, it would be amazing to see their run but I won't have as high hopes for them as for the Francophone top four at yeah. the moment. Yeah, that's fair. Right, I was just thinking about Jens being like, you got to beat the French teams twice or three times. And in my head, I'm like, I think the land winners only beat the French teams once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but they were they still... I mean, look at who the teams no, you're actually right, were. They're you're still right, the though. teams who yeah, you're right, you've though. seen performing really consistently throughout yeah. the split. Splits. And then at LAN, they still have that that consistency or that that strength, that skill that they can bring to the stage and still perform under all the pressure, under all the different circumstances, on different setups, whatever it is. Mm, yeah, I mean, we were one one Monkey Moon open net miss away from almost having another EU top yep. four. Yeah, that and too. who knows what happens in that game seven. I still think G2 would have won. They just look better, but, you know it is like so they're so good and they and they get so much good practice all split long uh so yeah all right well let's make our case same thing we did for na let's do it for eu let's try to keep it quick we've got plenty more to get to i don't know why you uh you did this michael because it was fun you didn't give me what you didn't give me oxygen what is this (laughs) oh no so it's actually the opposite it's the case of why they won't make land. Oh, not why they will. And I wasn't going to make you bet okay, against so your own your own ore. My mistake. I misread. Yeah, come on, dude. That actually would have been great content. So you should have done yeah. It, but... So you want to take it? You want to take it anyway? We'll swap. <laughs> sure, I'll do it. Yeah, Casey and Oxygen. All right, Kate. Okay. Jeez, that's brutal. <laughs> Casey and Oxygen. What the heck? That is. All right, rough. I got to tell like, you guys. I'll, this I'll is... openly take the best. The team I said was the best team in the world and my favorite team. And I'll say why they're not making London. <laughs> Let's just <laughs> kick them out. Well, let me, we're going to test my salesmanship here. I've got Carmi yeah. Corp. Everyone oxygen. clip this out of context and share and this it. Is, yeah, oh, I'm going to get fired. <laughs> <laughs> this is why Carmi Corp will not make the major. First and foremost, everybody is still looking at them as the number one team. For some reason, even when they lose, Everyone thinks they're still the best, including myself. And that's a lot of weight to carry. It's a lot of pressure on your shoulders. With that being said, there are two new teams that are genuine uh, contenders for regionals. And I think that's just going to make things just that much harder. I mentioned it earlier. Those top four are not so clear anymore. And listen, we're talking about LG, uh, Luna Galaxy and Oxygen, but that's not the only teams that I think have consolidated and done a little bit better job with their talent. We've got uh, Resolve. They're keeping Raziers. They've got Cash and Ivan. Now, I'm not thinking that is a regional winner, but maybe an upset here or there. Maybe grab a a dub over KC in the Swiss stage to give them a tougher match as they roll into the bracket. But I think the big thing is that the consistency, it it just can't last forever. We've seen it time and time again. BDS, NRG, now Vitality. It just can't last forever. And Carmi Corp has been incredible, but I think now is the time 
that they they tumble. Wow, impressive. Oh, the, the, they're, <laughs> All right, they're... well, let me keep going with it. Let me keep going. Yeah, Oxygen. No. Now, we, Michael, I think you summed it up perfectly. They are that heavy hitter. They are full swinging. They're not going to be uh, cautious. They're not going to be careful. That's not what they're here to do. They're here to triple flip reset. They're here to pre-jump off the ceiling. What do we used to call it? The Tarzan swing. They're here <laughs> to clip and put on a show. They always have. I know that as someone that has casted. And unfortunately, we are prone to slow starts. We are prone to playing to the level of our competition. And we are prone to uh, some inconsistencies. Sometimes we just show up and have a bad day. And if you do that in Europe, then you're not going to make the major. Yen's just said it. You've got to be in the top four for at least two of these events, if not in the uh, top two for one of them, or you're not making it. And I I've been talking about it in regard to the Francophone teams, but it's true for auction as well. It's no longer just four teams that you have to jump. You And we're actually one point behind uh, Magnifico. So we got to jump that team as well. So I, I, you know, I don't think Carmen Corp's making it. I don't think Oxygen's making it. Nice. Lando, you got that? So we got to make sure that gets out quick. <laughs> Everybody you know. Um, and ship. Yeah, I, I can go next. Great picks. I totally agree, especially on the second one. Um, the ones I'm going to be doing are Luna Galaxy and uh, Gentlemates, the team I've been riding for the whole episode. That's great. Uh, Gentlemates, <laughs> it's really simple. Uh, you guys ever heard of the term lightning in a bottle? Yep. Because uh, that's what you saw down at Copenhagen. First of all, fraud win against G2, the best team in the world, obviously. Like, EU can only beat NA when they get lucky. Um, and then, you know, listen, they, they played really well. You can't take that away from them. But uh, at the end of the day, this is still the team that was top eight twice and was on the verge of not even making the major, if not for the other great teams in this region playing the teams that they were contending against. They looked pedestrian, okay? They looked very pedestrian. They looked like they were closer to the non-land teams than the other three big three French teams. Um, and, you know, while you can capture lightning in a bottle, greatness is consistency. And they have not proven to be consistently great. While the other teams have cores or players that have been consistently great for years upon years. Now, Seiko, love the guy. But half his career, he wasn't making, wasn't making majors, right? And, and not half, like a quarter of his career. Uh, you know, Tachi, uh, as Vatira, you know, he kicked them. And Vatira is the best player of all time. And Juicy, you know, he couldn't even win with Joyo, who's the best player in the world obviously because he plays for oxygen so you know all three considered uh you know they got lucky they got a mickey bracket they only had to yeah. play every one in uh, every number one and two seed i do that all the time in ranked um and they're not gonna make the major uh, <laughs> in terms of luna galaxy uh they have a spanish player and spanish players throw that's it that's my whole thing <laughs> thank you i mean you're talking about getting lucky the two teams that i have to somehow uh get out of that top four uh, are Team Vitality and Team BDS, and they just got lucky last split. They, they <laughs> got to the finals of Europe before they actually met Carmen Corp in the bracket and got eliminated. You know, that's just pure luck. Uh, they're, not, they're not up for, for another major. They're, they're not making it to London. Team Vitality and BDS, we've just been talking them down. Can they regain? Hell no. Vitality, <laughs> they've got Rados in. Uh, I, I said they shouldn't change that guy, but I'm, I'm, I have to, you know, retract that statement. Um, it's it's time for a roster move, buddy. Uh, I can't keep up with Zen. <laughs> Is it time uh, to learn team, APAC? Team BDS, I don't know why they even try to make to, make it to the major because Drali is clearly not ready for it yet. Um, yeah. So honestly, just forfeit and go next. <laughs> See you in 2025. Before we move on, uh, that most of that was all sarcasm. Before you start, get to typing, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> was, That's you know. not. We all believe everything that we just yeah. said wholeheartedly. <laughs> all Take it to the bank. Yeah. There we go. Clip it right. and ship it. Thank you. Uh, so that view. is the teams that we all don't think will make the major. Y'all give us uh, some votes in uh, the comments as well. Let us know who you think sold it best. Let's move on to the rest of the world. Can anyone stop the expansion region super teams? Sam, uh, who has a better chance to challenge Furia? The new look complexity. Obviously, we got Diaz alongside CRR and Razable. Or Ninjas with a more experienced Swift. Or do you think Fury is just yeah, going to keep rocking? Um, 
I mean, I'm kind of a dilute. I've like, I didn't do it on purpose. Like, I'm, I'm not like following them actively. Oh, and I didn't start following them actively, but I've become kind of a delusional like ninjas in pajamas fan. I don't really know why. I just like really like watching them play, and I like Astromic and I like Swift, and it's just like a good, good vibe. Um, I think that they could have potentially been the, se- the second best team in Sam at their peak last last, but they were just horrendously inconsistent uh, from series to series. It almost felt like. Um, so kind of similar to almost like a mini super, super, super broke man's vitality. It kind of feels like when they know what they're doing and all three of their players are engaged, they can be right there. But when they, they just kind of fall apart every once in a while, I'm going to just hedge my bets and say that they're going to figure it out a little more. Uh, you know, Stromick, he always figures it out. You know, sometimes we'll have an off split here and there. He'll come close, but he won't make it. But Stromick, this guy... I don't know. He finds the best players. He develops them. And I think even if it takes a few splits, you know, he, he always gets back into that lane conversation. So I'm going to go with Nep. Okay. And for me, it's going to be complexity because they've looked good enough, I guess, to at least get that uh, major spot. Yeah. Um, but they haven't really been able to challenge Furia. Up until maybe the last moment, but even then, you know, you could see it at uh, Copenhagen, right? Yeah. You could see that their level just wasn't quite there. Uh, they couldn't quite perform, and of course, it all depends on how you're feeling at on the day, and there's a lot of factors that go into it. Um, but I, I think you can say with quite some certainty that the best teams during the split performed in. Copenhagen and that's why a team like Complexity struggled that's why a team like Rule 1 kind of struggled they were there but not quite there and now without Dorito but with Diaz right that's actually such an exciting move because it's such Mm -hmm. a young and to a certain extent unproven talent Um, but we've seen that he's not just a 1v1 player you know and it, it, it's time to get a really good once talent up there again yeah. in the three states because we've had an era in Rocket League where all the new talent was 1v1 talent learning how to play 3v3 because that's where, you know, that's where the competition was ultimately. You could win only so much in 1v1 show matches and the one off tournaments there are. So uh, that was the case with Scrub Killer. Uh, that was the case with Fairy Peak. I mean, not, not completely, but we had the, those top players there. Uh, and yeah. we've not seen it for a while, I feel like. There have been some other players who've been really good at 1v1. I mean, Zen beat everyone, but that was just because he was bored of playing twos. Um, I don't know if I agree with that. Uh, Zen, Daniel, Rawas. Rawas. Rawas, I will, I will give you Rawas. But I think the others are just such good Rocket League players that they can also be very good in, in the ones arena, but they're not the Dan, ones. You don't think Dan's a ones? I think of Dan as like a ones main. He, he No, I see what you're saying. He was definitely playing bubble tournaments and like kind of had some aura around his name in team modes as well. It, it felt like Diaz really did kind of get his... Yeah, him he and Nash reminded their... each other. They got, they got their rise to where they are now, yeah. like almost strictly through uh-huh. ones. Yes, he came on the radar uh, through 1v1 and then, you know, got picked up by a team. Yeah. So I want to see him do really well on complexity and I think he can do it. I, uh, unfortunately, I think neither. I don't think either. Ooh. I don't think either of them are going to be Furia. Furia, um, I think there was a lot of question marks. I think people believed in Falcons when we were walking into the major, but I think there was still some question marks around uh, Furia. Now, obviously, it depends on like who you ask, of course, but... Um, Furia showed what they're capable of through Swiss, absolutely pooping their way through there. And obviously they did have a little bit of a flub, but once we got to the top eight and Vitality took them down. But um, when they go back home, I, I think I think they're going to potentially three-peat. That's a kind of a bold take. But, you know, another team that we think about, we think about the word three-peat, maybe the most iconic team because of how often that organization does it is the Falcons mm-hmm. down in Mina, who are kind of the Furia of, yeah. of Mina. Or maybe they are. You know, Furia are the Falcons of, of Sam. Ooh. Leave a comment, and I would tell me which <laughs> one is which. Um, but yeah, so, you know, big big shakeups. I was I was completely... Ahmad just made me look like a fool. 
because I said, there's no way that Rule 1 make a change. And then they just did it like two days later, which was so cool. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> but he's now on Twisted Minds. Um, Venom is now uh, on Rule 1. Um, so my question for you guys were, is, you know, are we going to see another 3 Are we going to see a perfect season domestically for the Falcons? Or are one of these two moves maybe open up some sort of secret second level? For these I, uh, sort of tertiary teams, I keep seeing, and I'm, I'm, I don't, I, I don't agree with this, but I keep seeing everyone say they think Twisted Minds is going to jump Rule One with this move. They think that um, Ahmad joining the Twisted Mind squad is going to elevate them to a level that they, they think that they will be consistently competitive and, e- and even, you know, perform well enough to take that spot from Rule One. Um, I don't know. I don't know that I'm on that train. I, you know, we talked about this in the past. Nupo Nation. I, I think he is just too special of a talent to miss out. Um, I, I do think that Ahmad is going to help raise the ceiling for Twisted Minds. Uh, but I think that there's got to be a reason why Nupo wanted to make a change. And I, I did say it that way because I feel like that's what it was. I think it, it could have been Khaled. It could have been Ahmad, but it obviously was not going to be Nupo. So I think he saw something there. And the team saw something there that they believe in. Um, so I, I think, uh, I mean, I think Twisted Minds will be good, but I think it will probably see a repeat of, of Rule 1 and Falcons, and I do think Falcons will, will ultimately be the, the top dog once again. Well, I, I said last week when we were talking about Rule 1 that um, the vibes were less than immaculate, I think is how I phrased it. Right. Um, sometimes they say the streets are talking. Um, but the streets were in fact not talking at all, and that might have been the problem. Um, so I think that Rule One is in a rough position, even with the roster move. Yes, they're still in the lead for the points and everything, but I do follow the narrative of Twisted Minds overtaking uh, Rule One. Go, are they going to be a challenger for Falcons? No. No, I don't see that happening. But there's going to be this fight behind Falcons with Rule 1, with um, Twisted Minds. There's a, a couple of other teams. You have Bravado in the mix uh, there as well, just yeah. recently made a roster move for Venom. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see who's going to take that second spot. I think Twisted Minds has a really good chance at it, even better than before... Um, before the major, even though they were...